A court challenge brought by the first wife of the late Amazulu King Goodwill Zulitini has thrust the issue of customary versus civil marriages right back into the spotlight. Now, uh, Queen Swongile Dlamini Zulu is seeking an interdict to bar the appointment of a regent or a successor to the throne following the king's death in March. Now, she argues in court papers that her marriage to the king was a civil one in community of property and therefore excludes any subsequent marriages under the customary law. Now, whilst not discussing the specific merits of that particular case, uh, we have called on customary um, uh, law expert and customary law uh, lecturer at the University of Venda, Azama Mupai, to help us understand and unpack how, what the law says and the legalities are around issues of customary marriages. Azama, thanks so much for your time. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you and good morning to all your viewers. Thank you for having me. If we can perhaps just start off by taking a look at the definition of what constitutes a customary marriage in the South African context and also just juxtapose that vis-a-vis uh, -vis a civil marriage in South Africa. What is the difference? Well, um, a customary marriage, simply put, is a marriage which is entered into according to customary law, and customary law being our um, indigenous um, African practices. Um, as indigenous people, the, the way we enter into marriage. But in light of customary marriages right now in South Africa, when we speak of a customary marriage, it's that marriage which is uh, entered into according to the law that recognizes such marriages, but also that has gone through all the requirements um, according to the customs or the practices of the people who enter into such a marriage. So simply put, most people will call it a traditional marriage. But uh, now we are speaking of such marriages being recognized compared to what they were in the past. Coming to civil marriages, this would be a um, marriage uh, uh, that has been entered into according to the Marriage Act of 1961. Simply put, the Western uh, marriage in the past, uh, they were even called Christian marriages. The civil marriage is, is, is marriages based on um, common law or Western practices which have now become more uh, of, of secular type of, of, of marriages. So then there are other um, sort of definitions that one has to look into, like, for example, uh, when one enters into a customary marriage, do you have to then prove, uh, and one would imagine you would have to at a certain point if there's a dispute, prove uh, that you actually are married. Um, so what is uh, the litmus test then for proving that you are customarily married? Well, um, this is rather a very, uh, um, I might give you a very lengthy answer because um, right now in South Africa, we have two, two sets, if you like, of customary marriages and the requirements would not necessarily be the same also because of the past that we come from but let me speak of uh, the requirements of a valid customary marriage as we stand today it would have to be a marriage that is entered into by two consenting adults um, adults we know that it's, uh, in terms of age the person has to be 18 years and above if below that age you need parental consent to enter into that marriage You'll have to consent to enter into such a marriage. But the most important thing now is that marriage must be entered into according, must be entered into or celebrated uh, according to customary law. And of course, it has to be negotiated. Now, that is what is required for you to prove that indeed you have entered into a valid customary marriage. It's more than just you showing that you're of age, you have consented, but you must also prove that you have went through the necessary processes according to your customs, according to your traditions to enter into such a marriage. I said in the beginning that then 
it, it, it draws a different picture because when we go to marriages that would have been entered into in the past, that is before the Recognition Act, the things that I am saying of concern, sometimes you might not find them. The Act still recognizes them as long as at the time, which would be uh, the year 2000, at the time the Recognition Act came into force, such a marriage was valid according to customary law. Now, the litmus test for such marriages is solely based on customary law. The, new require, the, the requirements in the new act might not necessarily apply because uh, these ones were entered into before the commencement of the act. And then again, when we speak of customary marriages, uh, they are potentially polygamous. Polygamy is allowed in this kind of marriages. There is also a way that one would need to prove that their polygamous marriage is valid or not. And also that would differ the requirements for a valid polygamous marriages after the commencement of the Act in 2000 and those polygamous marriages entered into before the commencement of the Act. I hope I have uh, simplified it enough to cover the question that you asked me. You certainly have, and, and I just have a few more questions and uh, just getting to understand this properly. So, um, before uh, the uh, Recognition Act, if someone was married in a civil union, you, we, we always heard of umfaz uh, pepa. So, if someone had a legal, uh, a civil union, was, was married through a civil union, and then subsequently still engaged in um, uh, subsequent marriages traditionally. What is the legal standing of the customary marriages then? And, and we're talking now uh, before the recognition of the Act. Yes, uh, because for, 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 the, for the polygamous marriages after the Act, really, it's very simple. The complication is actually with, with that class of polygamous marriages that you're speaking of where there is a civil marriage and a customary marriage within one household. Now, the, the challenges there is that this, there was a time where civil unions entered into by uh, black South Africans did not bear the same consequences as customary, I mean, as civil marriages entered into by um, other races. For example, custom, um, indigenous people will enter into civil unions and then such marriages will bear the consequences of being out of community of property, even though at a certain time, and Sakina, I must, ex I must um, uh, explain here that the timeline also is very important because there was a time uh, in this case, let's say before the year 1988, a very significant year, where um, spouses who were in a civil uh, marriage, um, according to the Black Administrative Act, of course, that civil marriage would not make the, any spouse in that marriage, and particularly a husband, to enter into a subsequent customary marriage. So those customary marriages that would come after the civil marriage would not have legal protection. But then now, in the same timeline, a customary marriage um, entered into before a civil marriage would actually be nullified by a subsequent customary marriage. So the laws at the time, you know, the apartheid system, the, the, the discrimination between blacks and and, and other races really complicated the African family structures because some people would be in polygamous marriages according to custom, but for the sake of registration, for the sake of having a recognized a marital status, then some would choose one wife to, to register a civil union with, which would actually uh, present a challenge to the other wives. And then you would also have instances where um, there were certain types of households where uh, polygamy would be inevitable. And without really uh, try, uh, putting myself on the spot, there would be marriages, for example, in traditional 
leadership where poly uh, polygamy would be inevitable for, for certain purposes. And now for the purpose of registration, for the purpose of uh, getting a legally recognized marital status, there would be that confusion. People would be in civil marriages and customary marriages. Others would be in customary marriages, maybe for purposes of getting property, would enter into civil marriages with other people, I mean, with, with subsequent spouses. And that really created a whole lot of confusion at the time. Mm. Well, it started to get better um, after 1988 because the 1998 Matrimonial Property Act started to be very clear that, no, if someone is in a customary marriage, they cannot enter into a civil marriage with, with another spouse, meaning that an existing customary marriage after 1988 would automatically nullify a civil marriage. And we have had cases where, where a, a civil marriage was actually nullified because it was entered into uh, during the subsistence of a customary marriage. But mm. all these things, there is also something that we need to acknowledge, especially as an indigenous community, as, as a black community in South Africa, is that um, we, we, we also marry twice, you know, what we call dual marriages. There will be people, we, mm. we always start from customary marriages and then register our marriages according to civil, um, the Civil Marriages Act. That Zama? on its own is also... Zama? Yes? Can I ask you to please pause there. I I'm going to plead with you to please come back tomorrow because I think it's an important discussion that we don't want our SABC2 viewers to miss out on. So um, we can chat offline and hopefully we can get you back tomorrow uh, to pick up from where you left off because there's so much to understand and unpack around the legalities of um, customary marriages. So thank you so much uh, to Zama Mupai who is a customary uh, a law lecturer at the University of Venda helping us to understand exactly what the law says in terms of the standing of customary marriages in our country.